last few years, Outback Australia has become increasingly dry, and for all that time, the reasoning for a controversial water pipeline has been a government secret until now. I've called it a half billion dollar gift to the cotton industry. Almost half a billion taxpayer dollars spent on a water pipeline that doesn't help the environment. Instead, it could be causing environmental disasters like this. Look at these animals. Look at them. Announced in 2016, the Broken Hill Water Pipeline runs 270 k's and pumps 37 megalitres of water from Wentworth to Broken Hill each day. It was supposed to help the town of Broken Hill survive the drought after it came dangerously close to running out of drinking water in 2016. But many have been suspicious of the project, including former director of the Murray-Darling Basin Authority, Marianne Slattery. There was no environmental impact assessment. There was no cultural heritage assessment that was done. Pipeline was put through with a lot of haste. Today's previously secret business case reveals the New South Wales government's other motivation, Namely, if it could pump water to Broken Hill, the town's old water source, the Menindee Lakes, could be drained solely for irrigators to use. During this time period the pipeline was being built, Menindee Lakes actually filled up and had several years worth of water that would have been available for Broken Hill, but then it was drained. In a statement to the project, a spokesperson for New South Wales Water Minister, Melinda Pavey, said the pipeline was built to ensure security of water for Broken Hill and New South Wales is in the worst drought on record simply because there has been no rain. For locals, this is another slap in the face. Just a few weeks ago, a state government report found the over-extraction of water by irrigators brought forward drought conditions by three years, devastating the Lower Darling and causing those fish kills. There's not enough water coming down the river and the pipeline doesn't fix that at all. Well, Kate McBride is one of the Menindee locals devastated by the drought and the fish kills and she joins us now. Kate, good evening to you. Who do you think this pipeline was actually built to benefit? It's pretty obvious when you read the actual business case. I mean, the top two summary benefits explicitly say that it's to benefit um, Northern River irrigators from not having to put embargoes on their water. And it completely specifies cotton production as well. I mean, for years, the government's been telling us, no, this isn't what's going on. Irrigators don't get put first. But this business case clearly shows that irrigators are being put before townships and the environment as well. So why do you think the state government has kept this business case secret for the last three years? I think it's pretty damning what it's saying in there. I mean, it's effectively saying that, OK, we'll give water to Broken Hill, but only so water doesn't have to flow down the river and that that water can be used for irrigation. I mean, in the report, it even says how much more money they can make from cotton production over allowing that water to go downstream. So it's pretty upsetting when you see that your livelihoods and the people of Broken Hill's water supply are not being put before irrigation. Now, Kate, we did speak to Broken Hill uh, Mayor Daria Turley and she said that while the pipeline is controversial, it has meant that locals are able to turn on the tap. So isn't water security important here as well? Absolutely. And it's great that Broken Hill people can finally turn on their water, but unfortunately places like Menindee still can't. The fact is that about 70 years ago, from the Menindee Lakes, a pipeline was put in to supply Broken Hill, and that's never failed. There's been a number of times where they've gone onto water restrictions, and that's part of life out there, but it's never actually failed. So the fact is it didn't have to be done this way. We could have continued to rely on the Menindee Lakes. It's all about mismanagement and over-allocation further up. Report after report have shown that. So, Kate, are you against the whole idea of the pipeline? Like, do you think that if it wasn't built, we wouldn't have seen those fish kills? The fish kills, of course, weren't caused by this pipeline, but this pipeline is a direct result of mismanagement. We should have water in the Menindee Lakes still. The people of Broken Hill shouldn't have to be on a pipeline for the rest of their lives, but unfortunately now we have. What we need to do is fix water issues in New South Wales. We need to get to the bottom of what's going on and we need to protect the Menindee Lakes. The New South Wales government is still trying to continue to decommission the Menindee Lakes. They've got a current project on the table to just pretty much remove most of the water holding at Menindee. We need to look after these areas. It's great that Broken Hill have water now, but the answer isn't water in pipes. We need to have water in the environment. We need to be looking after our environment and the townships that live along it. All right, Kate, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Coming up, we 